Ox by John Madison Morton, adapted and abridged by John Fenner. James John Cox is played by Mr. John Nichols. John James Box is played by Mr. John Francis. Mrs. Bouncer is played by Miss Vicky Whitehill. Eight o'clock. Time to go to work. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Cox. Why, you've had your hair cut. Cut? Strikes me I've had it mowed. None of my hats will fit me. By the by, Mrs. Bouncer, I wish to know how it is that I frequently find my apartment full of smoke. Why, I, I suppose it's the chimney. The chimney doesn't smoke tobacco. I am speaking of tobacco smoke. Why, the gentleman who has got the attics is hardly ever without a pipe in his mouth. Then you mean to say that this gentleman's smoke, instead of emulating the example of all other smoke and going up the chimney, thinks proper to take the contrary direction. Why? And I suppose the gentleman that you are speaking of is the individual that I invariably meet coming up the stairs when I am going down and going down when I am coming up. Why, yes, I... I should set him down as a gentleman connected with the printing interest. Yes, sir. And now I am off. By the by, Mrs. Bouncer, I wish to draw your attention to a fact that has been evident to me for some time, and that is that my colds go remarkably fast. Lord, Mr. Cox! It's not only the colds, Mrs. Bouncer. I have lately also observed a gradual and steady increase of evaporation among my candles, wood, sugar, and lucifer matches. Lord, Mr. Cox, you surely don't suspect me. I don't say I do, Mrs. B. Only that I distinctly wish you to understand that I do not believe it's the cat. Now, good morning to you, Mrs. Bouncer. You'll be back at your usual time, I suppose, sir? Yes, nine o'clock this evening. You needn't like my fire in future, Mrs. B. I'll do it myself. Oh, he's gone at last. I was in fear Mr. Box would come in before Mr. Cox went out. Luckily, they've never met yet, for Mr. Box is hard at work in a newspaper office all night and doesn't come home till morning. And Mr. Cox is busy making hats all day long and doesn't come home until night. So I'm getting double my rent for my room, and neither of my lodgers is any the wiser for it. Now, let me put Mr. Cox's things out of Mr. Box's way. Why don't you keep your own side of the staircase, sir? It was your fault, sir. It was as much your fault as mine, sir. Dear, dear, Mr. Box, what a temper you are in, to be sure. I declare you are quite pale. What colour should a man be who's been setting up long leaders for a daily paper all night? As you say, sir, good day. Stop! Can you inform me who the individual is that I invariably encounter going downstairs when I'm coming up and coming upstairs when I'm going down? Oh, yes. Um, the gentleman in the attic, sir. I meet him in all sorts of hats. White hats and black hats. Hats with broad brims and hats with narrow brims. In short, I have come to the conclusion that he must be associated with the Hatting interests. Yes, sir. And they tell me that's why he took the hattics. <laughs> Good day to you, sir. Now, let me see. I've got a rasher of bacon somewhere. Oh, here it is. And a penny bread roll. Now, to light the fire. No! Oh, upon my life, this is too bad of Mrs. Bouncer. I had a whole box full of matches three days ago, now there's only one. 
Mrs. Bouncer has been using my gridiron! <laughs> the last article of consumption I cupped upon it was a pork chop, and now it is powerfully impregnated with the odour of red herrings. Oh. Oh. Oh, how sleepy I am. Oh. I'd indulge myself with a nap if there was anyone to superintend the turning of my bacon. Oh. 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 Perhaps it'll turn itself. I must lie down, just for a minute. I'll draw the bed curtains. Wonders will never cease. Conscious of being 11 minutes late, I was sneaking into the shop when my venerable employer, with a smile of extreme benevolence upon his aged countenance, said to me, Cox, I shan't want you today. You can have a holiday. I bought a mutton chop and I'll cook it now. Good gracious, I've forgotten the bread. No, what's this? A bread roll, I declare, that's lucky. Now then, to light the fire. Hello, who presumes to touch my box of lucifers? Why, it's empty. I left one in it, I'll take my oath I did. The fire is lighted. Where's the gridiron? On the fire, I declare. And what's that on it? Bacon? Well, oh, now, there's a quiet coolness about Mrs. Bouncer's proceedings that's almost amusing. She takes my last match, my coals and my gridiron to cook her breakfast by. Oh, no, no, I can't stand this. My chop is going onto the gridiron and her bacon can wait on this plate. Just go and visit the uh, amenities down the corridor before I eat my chop. <coughs> oh, 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 coming! Oh, 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 I wonder how long I've been asleep. My bacon! Hello? What's this? A chop? Who's chop? Mrs. Bouncer's, I'll be bound. Oh, she thought to cook her breakfast while I was asleep. With my coals too, and my gridiron. But where's my bacon? Here it is. Well, upon my life. Shall I falter with my vengeance? No. Out of the window it goes. Who are you, sir? If you come to that, who are you, sir? What do you want, sir? If you come to that, what do you want? It's the printer. It's the hatter. Go to your attic, sir. My attic? Your attic, sir? Printer, I shall do you a frightful injury if you don't instantly leave my apartment. Your apartment? You mean my apartment? You contemptible hatter, you... Your apartment? Ha! I like that. Look here, sir. Mrs. Bouncer's receipt for last week's rent, sir. Ditto, sir. Mrs. Mrs. Bouncer! Bouncer!
Gentlemen. Instantly remove that hat. They immediately turn out that printer. Well, but gentlemen. Explain. Explain. Whose room is this? Yes. Whose room is this? Doesn't it belong to me? No. There. You hear, sir? It belongs to me. No. It belongs to both of you. Both of us? us? Gents, don't be angry. But you see, Mr. Box only being at home in the daytime and Mr. Cox only at night, I thought I might venture until my little back second floor room was ready. When will your little back second floor room be ready? Why, tomorrow! I'll take it! So will I! Excuse me, but if you both take it, you might just as well stay where you are. True. Now, don't quarrel, gentlemen. I'll see if I can get the other room ready this very day. I shall retire now to my pillow. I beg your pardon, sir. I cannot allow anybody to rumple on my bed. Your bed? Hark ye, sir. Can you fight? No, sir. Then come on. Desist, sir. <sighs> Although we are doomed to occupy the same room for a few hours longer, I don't see any necessity for our cutting each other's throats, sir. Not at all. It is an operation that I should decidedly object to. And, after all, I have no violent animosity against you, sir. Nor have I any rooted antipathy to you, sir. Besides, it was all Mrs. Bouncer's fault. Entirely, sir. Have you read this month's Bradshaw, sir? No, sir. My wife wouldn't let me. <clears throat> that is, my intended wife. Oh, well, that's the same thing. I congratulate you. Thank you. You needn't disturb yourself. She won't come here. My intended wife happens to be the proprietor of a considerable number of bathing machines. Uh, where? At a favourite watering hole. How curious you are. Consequently, in the bathing season, we see but little of one another. Are you married? Me? Um, why? Not exactly. Ah. A happy bachelor. Why, not precisely. Oh, a widow. No, not absolutely. You'll excuse me, sir, but at present I don't understand exactly how you can help being but one of the three. Not help it? No, sir, not you nor any other man alive. Ah, that may be, but I'm not alive. I have been defunct for the last three years. Will you be quiet, sir? If you won't believe me, I'll refer you to a large circle of disconsolate friends. My very dear sir, if there does exist any ingenious contrivance whereby a man on the eve of committing matrimony can leave this world and yet stop in it, I shouldn't be sorry to know it. Ah, oh, then there is nothing more easy. Do as I did. No, well, what is it? Drown yourself. Oh, will you be? Well, listen, three years ago it was my misfortune to captivate the affections of a still blooming, although somewhat middle aged widow at Ramsgate. Just, <coughs> just my case, three months ago at Margate. Well, to escape her importunities, I decided to enlist into the blues, all lifeguards. <coughs> so did I. How very odd. But they wouldn't have me. They had the effrontery to say I was too short. No, and I wasn't tall enough. So I was obliged to content myself with a marching regiment. I enlisted. <clears throat> so did I. Singular coincidence. No sooner had I done so than I was sorry for it. <clears throat> so was I. My infatuated widow offered to purchase my discharge on condition that I lead her to the altar. <clears throat> Just... My case. I hesitated. At last, I consented. Um, I consented at once. Well, sir, the day fixed for the happy ceremony at length drew near. In fact, too near to be pleasant. So I, I suddenly discovered that I, I wasn't worthy to possess her, and I told her so. Whereupon, instead of being flattered by the compliment, she flew at me like a tiger of the female gender and threw the slop basin within an inch of my ear. 
I retaliated with a teacup. We parted, and the next morning I was served with a notice of action for a breach of promise. Ruin stared me in the face. I took a desperate resolution. I left my home early one morning with one suit of clothes on my back and another tied up in a bundle. I arrived on the cliffs. I opened my bundle, deposited the suit of clothes on the verge of the precipice, took one look at the yawning gulf beneath me and walked off in the opposite direction. Ingenious creature. You disappeared. The suit of clothes was found. Exactly. And in one of the pockets there was found a piece of paper with these affecting words. This is your work. Oh, Penelope Anne. Penelope Anne? Penelope Anne? Widow of William Wiggins? Widow of William Wiggins. Proprietor of bathing machines? Proprietor of bathing and machines. And Margaret? And Ramsgate? It must be she. And I was about to marry the interesting creature you so cruelly deceived. Oh, I congratulate you. I give you joy. And now I think I'll go for a stroll. Oh, no, you don't. I'll not lose sight of you until I have restored you to the arms of your intended. My intended? You mean your intended? No, sir. Yours. How can she be my intended now that I'm drowned? You are no such thing, sir. Permit me to follow the generous impulse of my nature. I give her up to you. No, sir. I wouldn't rob you for the world. Good morning, sir. Stop! Unhand me, Hatter, or I shall cast off the lamb and assume the lion. No bounder, sir. Oh, an insult. You know the consequences, sir. Instant satisfaction. With all my heart, sir. Mrs. Mrs. Bouncer! Mrs. Mrs. Bouncer! Gentlemen. Pistols for two. Oh, yes, sir. Stop! You don't mean to say that you keep loaded firearms in the house? Oh, they're not loaded. Then produce the murderous weapons instantly! Now then, why do you object to marrying Penelope Ann? Because I can't abide her. You'll be happy with her. Happy? Ha, don't be absurd, sir. Then don't you be ridiculous, sir. I can't find the pistols, but I have bought you a letter. It came yesterday. I'm sure I don't know how I came to forget it, for I put it carefully in my pocket. And you have kept it carefully in your pocket. <coughs> it's from Penelope Anne. Pardon my candour, but being convinced that our feelings like our ages do not reciprocate. I hasten to apprise you of my immediate union with, with Mr. Knox. Hurrah! Three cheers for Knox. The little back second floor room is quite ready. No, no one's it. No more do I. What shall part us? What shall tear us asunder? Box! Box! Let us embrace! You will excuse the apparent insanity of the remark, but now I see you at close quarters, the more convinced I am that you're my long lost brother. The very observation I was going to make. Tell me, in all honesty, tell me. Have you such a thing as a strawberry mark on your left arm? No! Then, then you, you are, are he! he.